Hi all, uh, welcome back. This is session eight, part three. We are going to be talking about expectation maximization. And this is a really interesting and really useful algorithm that is really, really, really simple. Basically you have just two steps in here and iteratively you want to keep computing them to improve your solution, okay? So what we call the E step is the expectation. And the whole idea over here is to infer some missing values. And then in the maximization step, uh, to optimize using those missing values. So to what values I am referring to? So if you remember from our previous part, we have something like this. So when I have a complete set of data, I can just remove this um, summation over my latent variables because I already know which is the corresponding data of X. So when I don't know it, I am talking about missing values, okay? Because I don't know what my CI should be. So I'm missing it, right? As right now, it is a latent variable. It is hidden from me. Now, how can I find it? And that is the beauty of this expectation maximization algorithm. How can we do it to obtain it and to use it? Um, and let's see from, from one particular example. So imagine like in my E step, um, I want to assume that I have complete data and then I want to find and infer my, my, my values, okay? So what, what is going to be my likelihood for this particular example? So let's assume that my likelihood, it's a simple summation of i equal to one up to n of the log of pxi, okay? Given theta. So that means that I have some missing value over here, right? So that is just a marginalization with respect of that latent variables. So this is going to be my summation of i of the log. And here comes the normal, the marginalization, right? My ZI of P XI, ZI given theta. Uh, this is a, a really useful trick that we use a lot in, in these type of algorithms in which you just simply assume that you have some latent variables. So since you are just observing this XI, that means like those latent are just marginalized out. And now again, we have the same problem as before, right? How can I just distribute this? with respect my log with respect of my this of my uh, p if I have this sum in the middle. So there is not an easy way of doing that. And what we are going to do is like in my expectation part, I'm going to assume that I have that 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 particular assignment. So I won't have this problem over here. So I assume my complete um, likelihood like we did before. Now I have my uh, summation of log of pxi set i given theta and now will, this will help me to infer what I know right so I'm assuming I assume over here that I know the correspondence so I assume that I have this pair xi ci and that will solve my my problems okay now what I have to do is just to find and define some way of optimizing these. So we, we define some Q function that is a helper function that depends on my parameter theta that I want to find and some iteration of theta, some theta at t minus one. And what I want to do is then to find the expected value of this complete loss, okay? Of the complete likelihood of theta given my data, uh, my previous parameter, right? My t minus one. And this expectation runs over d and, and theta t minus one because I have this, this distribution over here. And once I find that, that estimation, I want to do my m step. I want to maximize it. And maximizing it is nothing else but finding the uh, theta for the next step, right? If I'm t minus one over here, and this will be the R max uh, theta of this q over here, q theta t minus one okay Ma, uh, and if you want also you can do some map estimation over here and instead of doing the the q and this p uh, xi zi given theta you can also complete it with the, the posterior the sorry the prior and this will produce you a maximum a priori right so you can also do maximum likelihood estimation or maximum posterior uh, uh, estimation too by just simply uh, assuming some prior over the data. 
And as you remember, like this will help you to to solve that thing. Now the question is how these come to be, right? Like how how can we show that this actually works? You just simply I'm just assuming that I can remove this over here, right? So let's let's try to see and analyze the the basis for these particular derivations. So um, let's talk about these uh, theoretical basis, okay? So from from where it is coming, so. Uh, consider the the likelihood, right? Consider this likelihood over here, that, over here that we have, and we can complete that using some trig by assuming that I have some distribution that is positive, and I I can use it for different different uh, results. So I can just do these with my likelihood, right? I can take my likelihood. And then uh, the log of the sum of ci, and then I'm going to take one distribution, just multiply and divide by it. Basically, I I won't change it, but I will use it later. So I can have a qci over qci. So this is basically one, right? And then multiply this by p psi ci. Theta. And this is a trick that we will also use in variational inference. It's kind of used, used a lot. And what I can do now is like, I can use my Jensen inequality to find a bound over these. So if you don't remember, just as a addendum over here, Jensen's inequality says the following, um, that the function f, of the summation of some value, some scalar x, Lxi is less or equal to the summation of the lambda of that function of Xi, as long as f is uh, concave, uh, sorry, convex. Okay, so this is my Jensen inequality. So this is really nice because this is the same shape that we have over here, right? Log is my f function, and then I have a sum of this particular thing, and then I can use my qzi as some uh, lambda that is just uh, multiplying it. Now, the only issue is that uh, my log is concave instead of uh, convex, so I need to invert that, that sign over there, but that, that's it. So. That's why I say that it is a bound, right? It is a it is a lower bound of this one because it will give me some value that is below my likelihood. Okay. Um, if I apply it, then I have the summation i. Now I can distribute this inside of it and then just move this q z outside because this one will be lambda, right? So this guy over here will be my lambda, and this guy over here will be my x i in this in this shape, right? So this is basically the summation with respect of ci of qci, the log of pxi ci given theta over qci. Okay, nice. Now I have some, some form that is uh, easy to work with because now I don't have the sum of the log of the sums, but now I have a lower bound, but it's, it's okay, uh, we can work with that. So uh, I can keep working with this. Um, if I change this, um, I can just move this uh, logarithm over here and then just take the Q outside. Um, what you will see is that this is basically um, the summation over i, and this summation with respect to qci is just the exp is an expectation, right? So this is the expectation of this logarithm over here. So it's my expectation with respect to uh, ci of the log of pxi ci given theta um, minus uh, this expectation of minus the expectation of QCI 
uh, log of QCI, right? So this thing over here, this is the entropy of QCI, right? And this thing over here, I can just call it um, some loss function. Let's just call it L of uh, theta Q, okay? Because we will use it uh, in a little bit, okay? So now it is really useful because if I, I can work with this lower bound instead of working with my original uh, likelihood and that would be that would be as useful as, as before. Now, if we work a little bit with this uh, L theta Q, we can change the shape of, of the function over here. So let's just um, name it. So I can just take this function and transform this uh, likelihood over here and just compute the, the posterior of that one. So I will have my summation i of, let, let me put it back in, in the summation form, okay? So this is the summation of ci, qci, and the log of, so now this is uh, my ci given xi times pxi, right? And psi given theta. So now I'm just transforming these into its posterior using this over my um, my qci that I had before. So I'm just going to to take it back. Okay. So I'm I'm actually uh, taking the whole the whole thing right. I'm just bringing it to change the shape and you will see in a little bit why. Um, so this thing, I can just separate both my, um, my QCI's and my PXI over here and I will end up with the following. I will do the sum of I, the sum of CI's and then I have my QCI, QCI of the log of PCI uh, given xi theta over qzi and then I have also um, let me put it here log of pxi given theta over here so if I separate these two things over here this is just the KL divergence that we have so if you don't remember, just please go back to the basics and review what the KL was. And um, basically what this is telling me is that I will have um, the summation of I of my minus my KL between PCI, uh, sorry, QCI, QCI and my PCI uh, given XI Theta over here, so this is this is my Q right? because I'm, I'm I'm taking the expectation with respect of Q, so that is my first term, and then I have the expected value of my log plus expected value with respect of QCI of the log of PXI given theta, right? So cool. Now what I want to do is to make this approximation as tight as possible, right? Because now what I have is that my likelihood is in some particular, um, my likelihood is over here. And what I'm trying, and what I'm finding is some, some other function that just goes below, right? So this is L of theta, and this is my uh, L of theta Q. And what I wanna do is to try to reduce that particular gap as much as possible, right? I want to push this up. Right, to reduce and, and make it as tight as possible. So, um, how can I do that, right? How, how can I make it uh, as close as, as my likelihood? So, the main difference, uh, this does not, it, it doesn't matter, right? This is a constant value with respect to, of, of my, my parameters. So, uh, what I need is to have this over here. So, when this is minimum, right? So this, this divergence will be uh, minimum with QCI is equal to this PCI XI. So if I assume, for instance, for a second, let's assume that I have some Q and some iteration T, and I'm going to make it equal to it. So I'm going to make it equal to my PCI XI and theta at that particular iteration, right? 
So if I assume this over here, now this becomes zero and I just get my PXI given theta, right? I just get my, my tight bound with respect of, of the original one because it, it was my likelihood, right? So if, if you remember, like I am getting back at this. So uh, when I do this marginalization, if I marginalize CI, I just get the log of PXI given theta and this is this, right? So I will be getting back without the CIs. So that is what I was looking for. Now, if I plug these, these QT back into my original uh, definition, right? Into my, my original uh, divergence. Did I, did I give it a name? No, I think I didn't. So this is my original one, right? So let's call it Q. So a Q theta, small Q. So if I plug it back into this original, into my my thing that I'm calling Q here, I can plug the the that particular value. So assume this that this is actually uh, theta, but instead of any Q, I want to plug this Q T that I got over here. Um, that is just the expectation. So I, I just have the same thing, right? The summation of the expected value now is with respect of QT, right? Um, of the log of what? PXI CI theta minus the expectation of this, but that, that is just the entropy, right? So plus the entropy of QCI. Um, Oh, sorry, my Q is also Q T, right? So this is the expectation step that we have before, right? I am just computing the expected value of the complete function over here. And what I wanna do then is just to do the maximization. So I actually, I'm interested in finding my theta, my theta plus one. So this is nothing else but just taking the arc max theta of my function before of this Q uh, theta QT. And this basically is just a optimizing with respect of this first term because my um, entropy does not depend on the theta that I'm trying to maximize, so I can just drop it out. Um, so this is the argmax theta with respect of the summation I of the expected QT of log of PXI. Given theta. So I am doing my M step over here, right? And what is this thing over here? So this was my KL, right? I just find out that this thing over here is the KL divergence plus the log of PI, PXI. So this is basically uh, dark max theta of the summation I of minus scale divergence of Q, but it is not any Q, right? So I had my QT over here. So it is the KL of QT uh, CI giving my PCI XI. Uh, sorry, I inverted those. Uh, you get the, the idea. Uh, so PCI given XI given theta T plus the log of PXI given theta T. And since I assume that this thing at the beginning was equal, right? So that makes my KL zero. So I am just obtaining the maximum theta of my original function, right? So this is just the argmax of my summation of i of log of pxi at ti, right? And this is so cool because as you can see, we're actually maximizing the same thing as, the, as what I was trying to do at the beginning, right? Without the uh, latent variables. So that is really, really cool. So now I can just do this iterative process of doing my a, a, my expectation step and then doing the maximization step and just going 
back and forth. And that will guarantee my, my solution over there. So that is really cool. Um, in the next part, we will see an example of how to use this in, in some distributions. So see you there.